Hey there, quilting friends. So one of my most frequently asked questions is what type of sewing machine do you sew on? But I think the obvious reason for that question is what type of sewing machine do you recommend? Well, this is a very hard question. Sewing machines are very personal to the user and there's such brand loyalty among quilters for so many different reasons that it is hard to make a specific recommendation. But I do have some great tips on acquiring or purchasing a new sewing machine that will be helpful to all sewing machine collectors, and I do mean collectors, from the absolute beginner to the most seasoned quilter ready to upgrade. So if you're faced with the decision on your next sewing machine and you wanna get the most from your new acquisition, stick around for my four key factors that are the most important when considering your next machine and the explanation for those key factors and my bonus tip on saving money on your brand new machine. So if you're interested in this topic, let's chat. I am so glad you decided to hang out with me in my coffee bar today to chat about sewing machines. So let me start by giving you a very brief journey of my sewing machine ownership. It's also important to note that this is not a paid post. This is just my own personal opinion and personal choice of sewing machines based on my likes and needs, which are not necessarily the same as yours. So my first machine was actually borrowed from my grandmother and mother and I learned on an antique all metal Singer sewing machine in a travel case similar to the one pictured here. This machine had all the features a new sewist needed, a strong back and a strong constitution, because after all, learning to sew clothes and hating it and arguing with my mom while attempting to learn a new hobby as a teen does not lend itself to top of the line. But years later as an adult, after sewing here and there on basic curtains and pillows and other home decor, I found quilting and a love affair was born. So I purchased my first new to me sewing machine from the local Bernina dealer. This was a used basic sewing machine quilters edition with a quarter inch foot for quilt piecing. I traded up several times through the Bernina line, mostly for embroidery features. And I settled on a Bernina 830 with a large throat. I assumed this machine and its hefty $13,000 price tag with all its magical feet would be the last sewing machine I would ever own. Bernina sewing machines have a little magic for everyone, but they aren't for everyone. And my last two models, well, I just didn't bond with them very well. I had all the specialty feet from years of collecting, but I did very little embroidery and I found the machine very fussy for my 100 miles per hour sewing style. I was very impatient with the thread cutting function and a free motion quilted too fast for the stitch regulator. So a few years before my major Bernina purchase, I bought a backup machine from a Janome dealer, the Janome 6500P. Now this machine was an electronic sewing machine, no embroidery, a big large throat, all metal construction and no nonsense. And I found myself constantly gravitating toward that machine for my everyday sewing because it sewed fast, it cut fast, and there was plenty of room for my hands. And I just flat preferred the simple nature of this machine over everything else. And at this time, the machine had a $1,200 price tag. Well, ultimately, I decided to give up my Bernina embroidery machine and I found it another loving home. I kept my 6500P professional machine and I went out and purchased a second sewing machine and decided on the upgraded new model of my Janome, the Janome 6700P, about $3,000 with 1,200 stitches per minute, one of the fastest top loaders in the industry, which fit my style of sewing perfectly. I prefer an all metal machine and both Janome models fit that bill and my newest machine comes with the AccuFeed system, which makes it easy for me to piece lots of layers without always needing a walking foot. I also have a small Janome Gem Platinum that I use as a classroom demonstration machine. And at a price tag of about $250, I think, on show special, it's a very inexpensive and lightweight model. It makes it very easy for me to head to class or retreat with a working sewing machine in the event I need to demo a technique. So as a professional, I may have different needs than you do when it comes to sewing and quilting. So let's go to my tried and true tips for purchasing your own special machine to fit your need. So my four most important factors for acquiring a new sewing machine are budget, purpose, features, and support. 
So let me explain each of these. When it comes to budget, well, you have some decisions to make. If you're brand new to sewing, my best tip is to find a sewing machine that Aunt Betty is no longer using or pick up a great used machine from your local thrift shop. I have rarely been in a thrift shop lately that doesn't have at least one great sewing machine. These machines are typically priced under $200 and just need a little love to bring them back to life. Now you wanna be completely certain that you're gonna fall in love with sewing before you spend a large chunk of change on a brand new pricey machine that you'll regret dusting later if you aren't planning on using it. If you do purchase or are gifted with an antique sewing machine, take it to your local repair shop. You can Google the closest one or you can ask your local quilt shop for the name of a great tech and have the machine serviced. A service tech will clean out any rust or dust from being in the bottom of a closet and make sure all the belts and the parts are in good working order there are no pesky threads binding the gears, and they'll strip all the old oil and re-oil the machine, reset the timing and the stitching for you so that it's in really good working order. This type of machine will allow you to practice all the skills you need and not feel super guilty if you ultimately decide that sewing and quilting is really not for you. I actually know lots of great quilters who prefer to sew on an old trusty sewing machine, and they love bringing them back to life so they don't wind up in a landfill. Now my next factor, is purpose. What do you envision you're going to be using your sewing machine for? This really goes hand in hand with both budget and our next factor, features. So I suggest making a list of all the things that you envision making, fixing, and creating on your new machine. And this will help you plan how much time you'll be spending using it. Perhaps you'll save money by not paying someone else to do those things for you or the machine will keep you from throwing things away that you can repair. Or perhaps sewing is what you wanna do for your own enjoyment to keep you sane and to practice self-care. I have a lot of newbies starting that just recently retired. So this gives you a good starting point to figure out the next factor. So now that you know your purpose for having a sewing machine, well now you can talk all about features that you'll need to make your vision happen. Do you think you wanna to learn to quilt? Well, you'll definitely need a sewing machine that has a quarter inch foot or a way to mark a quarter inch seam on your machine plate. Do you want to work on heirloom sewing and you need a, lot, a machine with lots of decorative stitches? Are you interested in embroidery and you want to buy an all-inclusive machine that you can make adorable gifts for your grandchildren? Are you planning on doing some free motion quilting? Well, you'll definitely need a machine that has free motion quilting foot and the ability to drop those feed dogs. Think about all the features that you might need and speak with your dealer or local professional about all the features of each of the machine and the cost associated with those features. This also gives you a great reason to evaluate factor four, and that is support. Do you have a local dealer near you? Are they friendly? Are they helpful? Does their shop have good reviews? Do they have a repair technician on site? Do they have classes to teach you how to use all the features of your new machine? I know lots of people that buy machines online or at their local quilt show from a vendor that they don't know or that is too far away. Trust me, I myself have been the victim of a show special. I once bought a brand new serger from a quilt show dealer and I found out later that not only was the shop 45 minutes away, they had no classes, no support, and were of absolutely no use whatsoever when it came to that machine. When I called to ask questions, there was only one person on staff that knew anything about the machines. She was never available, and when I finally did get to speak to her, she was rude. And I realized quickly that she knew nothing about the machines she was selling, and I was on my own. So take the time to visit the dealer, even if they aren't right up the street. Don't be convinced to buy something that you haven't tried. If you sit down at the machine to take a test drive and it's just not working for you, don't buy it. You probably don't like something about it and you'll regret that purchase. Also, don't buy what your friend tells you to buy. Try them out for yourself and buy the one that you like that fits your needs. Sewing machines are like bras. It's a personal choice and you have to find one that fits you best. Now I told you in the beginning that I would give you a tip on saving some money should you choose to purchase a machine. 
Now, once you make the decision to buy a new machine and you know exactly what you want to buy, do some research on the manufacturer and see if they run any specials. If your shop or the manufacturer are going to the local quilt show, they sometimes have show specials that week that you can take advantage of if you know that that is the machine you want to buy. Also check around the holidays. Some companies offer special financing on machines at special times of the year. Some of them offer as much as 48 months 0% financing if you spend a pretty penny and you have great credit. Now, the secret to making that deal work for you is to divide the total purchase price by the number of months of the financing offer minus one month. For example, if you're spending $1,000 and they're offering you 12 months same as cash, divide that $1,000 cost by 11 months and make that amount of a payment each month. This will be way more than the minimum payment required by the finance company and it will enable you to pay off the balance of your machine in equal monthly installments one month before the deadline. So you won't be charged any additional fees and interest and you won't have to shell out all the money up front for your new sewing machine. It's easier on your budget. You just have to make sure to make those payments on time every month. I really hope this video helped arm you with some great tips so you can make the right sewing machine choice for you. If you learned something in this video, consider hitting the like button to let YouTube know that you had a good time here. And for more great videos from Cabin Quilters, please hit the subscribe button and let YouTube know that you enjoy this channel so they'll help recommend these videos to others. And as always, friends, until next time, happy quilting.